Aye, aye. Right. Well, as part of my little Make It Meat Monday where I cook something interesting and nice every week, I am doing a full English breakfast this week. Um, so tune in for that when the video pops up. But in the meantime, I'm going up to Alveston to my local butcher to pick up the ingredients for my uh, locally sourced English breakfast. So I'm going to be getting bacon, sausage, some local eggs, some black pudding, um, and I'm not sure what else because he has got some nice steak and um, kidney pies. Uh, we're going to go see Mike Perry, who's uh, I've known for years. He, he butchered my pigs actually um, 10 years ago before I was really doing YouTubing. I, I did a video of the pigs, you can look that up, but um, he butchered them as well. So we had loads of sausages off him. And during the start of lockdown, I actually got 10 kilos of sausages off him, Perry's porkers, because they are spot on. So we had uh, sausages over lockdown, the first lockdown. Now this is the third one and, and uh, we're gonna have some more sausages off him. Anyway, I'm hoping to have a little chat with him because uh, this is a legit, by the way, this is a little legitimate trip. I'm, a, I'm not breaking COVID rules, I'm going shopping. But while I'm there, I'm gonna mask up and I'm gonna ask him just a few questions. I thought it'd be interesting to speak to a local butcher, find out what he's been through during COVID, find out what it's like to be a local butcher and also, what the public can look for when they go to visit a butcher because some people don't actually know what that's like and maybe slightly intimidated perhaps of, of the thought of going in and not being sure what to buy so i'm going to get a few bits of tips off him uh and get my english breakfast right let's head up to see mike well here i am on the rank of shops up at alveston and mike's shop the butchers is just there just see it in the corner and the fruit and veg shop is behind me so i can get some tomatoes and some mushrooms for my fry up as well so that'll be great. I'm going to go and see Mike. I'm going to nip round the back, mask up, and we'll have a chat. Right, I'm just by the door. I'm going to go back round the back in a minute and talk to Mike, but I'll just have a look through the window. You can see their lovely counter. Mike's actually here, look. There he is. He's putting his apron on, but I'm just, look at this lovely display. I'm not going to go in the shop here. He's masking up. Um, look at that lovely selection there. I'm, I'm going to have some of that for my breakfast. There's some bacon there I can see. Oh, Mike, this is looking super. Um, and I believe you might have you got some black pudding around, Mike? We've got homemade black pudding. Oh, cracking! It's not conventional. It's uh, we bake it in a loaf tin. Excellent. And we just cut it in slices. So, Brilliant. Uh, I'll ask some. I'll come around and see you in a minute. I'll just look at all this. My mouth is watering, and I, I'm not having my breakfast yet. Right, let's go and see Mike. Okay, so I'm here with my local butcher, Mike Perry, and it's time to interview him. It's not going to be easy with a mask on, Mike, but we'll try it. So, I, I, I think a lot of people who watch my channel might not regularly go to a butcher, so I'm going to sort of, if you don't mind, interview you and ask you a few questions about butchery and stuff. Well, my first question is, how long have you been a butcher? Well, well I started when I was 13, so what's that, 47 years now. 47 years? 47 so years. Were you going into a shop as a Saturday boy or something like that? And I went in as a Saturday boy at 13, I knocked on the local shop door up down in a little village in Devon. Uh, they were looking for an apprentice. I said, look, I'm only 13, but I'll come in every night after school and all weekends and right. summer holidays. Um, took to it, preferred to be there than at school. So, and I'm still here, still And going. you went from there? Yeah. Brilliant. So you've been running this shop for how long? I've been in here now for 35 years. And I, I pretty well say that you I've got a very good niche, if you like, because not only do you just sell meat, if you like, but you've got your own range of everything, haven't you? We what sort of things do you do? Yeah, do you we make, make uh, we make all our own pies, uh, black puddings, sausages, which we've got championships for all of our pies, all of our sausages, all our homemade products, really. It's amazing. And from a butcher's point of view, where do you source your meat? Because, I mean, is it locally sourced or how do you how do you find your meat to put in the different right. products? Right, everything is uh, locally sourced, except for our free range chickens. They, right. They come from a company down in Crediton in North Devon. Okay. Uh, everything else comes from, we buy from a slaughterhouse in Gloucestershire. Uh, sometimes we have our own lambs and right. our own pigs in the shop. Mm. You've had my pigs in the shop, haven't I you? Have indeed. You've, had, you've come back as Paris porkers. Yeah. And you, you make quite a range of sausages. Tell us the range you make, because it's quite interesting, the ones you do, isn't it? Well, we tend to stick with, this time of year in the colder months, just a few, a few flavours. Mm. Generally for the weekend when we've got more people coming through the door. But we, we tend to do a, a, our traditional Perry's porkers, which is 
the best seller. You, Everybody's after Everyone Perry's loves the porkers. Perry's Porker. Uh, then we go for either a spicy one or a herby one, a fruity one. So, and as you know, Rich, we have the um, Bristol Blues, which was uh, an invention by Rich and Ben Prater <laughs> and, and the people of Bristol over the radio. Yeah, what um, a laugh that which was. has come on and we've won a championship with that. But not only did we win a championship with it, did you? What's we had... What's that? The golden sausage. The golden sausage. Oh my <laughs> life. I don't think I've ever seen that in the Have flesh. <laughs> wow. So we won this golden my, sausage. That, you, you and your golden sausage. <laughs> so that was, with, that was with the Bristol Blues. Oh, that's wonderful. They, so we won that, um, which was great fun. I go out and do uh, the odd talk yeah. to various ladies groups and gentlemen's groups and things. And that always brings a smile oh, to my face. Oh, I bet he loves it, Mike's golden sausage. <laughs> So, um, going back to your butchery then, so lockdown has been quite a challenge for a lot of people and for a lot of retailers and things. How has it impacted on you? Has it has an impact or have you been able to carry on very sort of normal? Uh, when it first started, um, we had a, a brand new cabinet put in, which yeah. was on the 13th of March. That was oh, on right. Monday. On the Tuesday when we opened up, we were hit like I've never been hit before with people I've never seen queues down the parade. Wow. Now we did that for three weeks. Yeah. Um, my wife and my son then said, look dad, we can't carry on doing what we're doing. So we're gonna have to shut the door. Now that actually broke my heart because um, I've never shut my door wow. to anybody. Yeah. But we shut the door and we then went to deliveries only. So people were ringing us up and we, we took on uh, a new, new person to come and work in the shop, which did all the deliveries for us. We also then took on an apprentice so, I'm but, sad to say that this pandemic has been good for us right. in our business. We then, in August, managed to get a screen, which yeah, I, believe, I noticed that the plastic all over, right the way through, still very the shop. Se separate from everyone else. So it keeps us separate from the yeah. customers. Um, we opened the doors, and we've continued. Our trade has been absolutely humongous. Do you think that's partly because people don't feel so intimidated coming here as going to the supermarket? Um, because we only allow one f one person in the shop at a time or a family group or bubble, mm. whatever you want to call them, um, we allow them in the shop. And we've stuck through that all through Christmas. Yeah. It was extremely hard, Yeah. but we've stuck with that. We don't allow anybody else in. If they try to come in, we say, please step outside just why we've got this customer. Um, I've also had customer came in to me and said, um, Mike, congratulations on your accolade. And I said, well, what accolade? I haven't done any competitions or anything. Not let it's the golden sausage. <laughs> for a while. Um, mm. And I said, well, what, what accolade is this? And he said, well, my wife has found you on Google somewhere yeah. as being one of the safest shops in South Gloucester. Really? To, to, wow. To buy in. Yes. Well, it is very safe. Because we, we allow only yes. one, you know. Yes. And it's worked well at Christmas when, and, and I'm sorry to say, some of the customers were waiting two, two and a half hours no to way. get in the shop. Wow. And, and that, is that shows the quality of your products though, doesn't so it, it really? It's frightening really, but when you get <clears throat> elderly gentlemen and ladies yeah. coming in the shop and say thank you very much for sticking to the rules and only allowing yeah. a group or one person at a time in the shop. You said we've stood out there for two hours, we haven't heard any single person grumble. And uh, were there any supply issues getting products or anything? No, we, we're lucky because we hang our meat. We have sort of three or four weeks supply in, the, in okay. or the carcass meat yeah. at any one time. And because we're buying local, not like the supermarkets that are buying from abroad, selling us yeah. English. Yeah, because yeah, because they cut in this in country. England, yeah. um, we've had it actually here, so we had it there all the time. And the, soap and the local suppliers or our slaughterhouse supplying us no issues at all fantastic so i mean I, i'm gonna i'm not gonna hold you up too long but i've just got a couple more questions for you really yeah. um so not everyone's sort of familiar with going to a butcher's so if they were going to approach uh, a butcher shop for the first time what sort of things should they possibly look for or maybe ask a butcher for you know for a bit of help if you like because yeah. you know to be honest when i look down at the cabinet you know, not everyone's going to be aware of what these cuts are. For instance, I'm presuming these are oxtails. How would you cook those? Would you? Is it advisable to go in and say, could you give me some advice? Right, a traditional craft butcher, mm. if they've gone down the correct lines, they've been taught how to sell and produce 
and also cooking methods to give ideas yeah. to to the public. What we find is a lot of people will come in and go, we've got this chef's book. Right, and yeah, he so, says we yeah. should have this. Okay, yeah. Right, which will be the most expensive piece of meat. Yeah. And you'll say to them, well, what are you actually going to do with it? Right. And they go, well, we've got, so-and-so says we've got to do it this way. And I said, well, realistically, a chef will only use the prime bit because yeah. he hasn't got the time and everything. Yeah. So if you're thinking about cost, because very often mm. they'll go, oh, that's expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, we can suggest other ways. Okay. We'll cook the same, yeah. with different cuts, different things. Yeah. That's what we do as craft butchers. That's what makes us what we are. Right. Um, and we look after. We get a lot of young people coming in now um, that are coming in and saying, I don't want to use the supermarket. I don't feel safe going in the supermarket. Yeah. What do you suggest? We had a lady back before Christmas. She said, I bought some lamb in the supermarket. It was atrocious. It was horrible. I've decided not to go there again. Come back to me. And she said, the only problem I've got, I don't know how to cook it. Right. So I said, well, that's not a problem. We can tell you. I boned okay. She had a half shoulder of lamb. Yeah. I boned it out for her, rolled it, presented it to her. The next week she was back for more. Brilliant. She was really pleased. Yeah. She asked her to put cooking okay. times there. We took the time. Yeah. We printed stuff off for her to well say, done. there's the cooking instructions. Yeah. That's what you've got to do. She came here. She's been here now since before Christmas. She's had Christmas meats from us. She's had stuff afterwards. She, um, she has put stuff on my site thanking me for looking after her. Oh, nice. Which is, which is lovely. It's great to have feedback. So, okay, so one final question, okay, and this is a personal choice from a butcher. Yeah. If you were going to pick for, for your weekend meal, cooking with meat, yeah. what would you personally like to cook or like to have cooked for you? If I you've got any like, choice. I like to have cooked because I've, like <laughs> I've got an extremely good wife that's an extremely good cook. Oh, well said. Well said. <laughs> Brownie points. <laughs> um, I like all food. Yeah. I really, I mean. Yeah, same but, here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a butcher's dog. <laughs> so, but realistically, I think probably either pork, we, I like to go for a bit of shoulder pork. Yes. Yeah. And shoulder pork, because it's got a bit of fat in it. Yeah. Uh, some pork can have that can be too lean, or some meats are too lean. So therefore, it can it doesn't cook so well. Right. You've got to have that little bit of fat. That's the thing. There. I think that's the message that's got a bit mixed up over the years, isn't it? Yeah. Everyone talks about taking fat out of things and stuff, but actually, things like beef and pork and stuff, you need a bit of fat, don't you, to give yes, it the flavour yeah. and make it moist and, and yeah. palatable. Really, I yeah. think. I'm sorry, I'm steaming up. That's now. all right. Is that <laughs> fair play? It's that blooming golden sausage yeah. you're talking about. <laughs> And your wife. Sorry, let's, <laughs> let's move on. There. So yeah, so you, you need the um, you need the fat for flavour as well, don't you? You do. Really? Yeah, of course you um, do. It, so a shoulder of pork is a recommendation, maybe for someone to to yeah, do for a weekend. Shoulder, then. shoulder of pork. Or, and is that slow roasting? So, yeah, slow roast it, and then you can either if you cook it even longer, you can use it as pulled pork, mm, oh, rather nice. rather than just slicing it. Yeah. But it's you know any all meat is good. There's a saying within the meat industry: God sends the meat the devil sends the chef that is brilliant <laughs> that is brilliant i'm not heard of, i so, totally like that so there we go that is the best tip i've heard god sends the meat the devil sends the chef that is what we're going to finish on i'm going to have a ch chat with mike now we're going to pick up some stuff for my breakfast but thanks mike really appreciate you chatting to us thank Pleasure. you Love see you all it. look forward to making meat monday yeah. with my fullest breakfast from mike perry <laughs> cheers